Hello there, thrill seekers. That was Frankenstein by Edgar Winter. And it sort of ties in with today's video theme, maybe. This is going to be another improvised video. And that means that I there are certain videos where I do a lot of studying and kind of working on a problem figuring it out, thinking it through, sometimes writing down notes, uh, sometimes almost scripting it out. There are others that I do, I kind of wing it, and it just seems like certain topics are better for winging it than others. And this one seems like one that should be improvised. So let's see how it goes. Okay, here is a question I got. Recent events in the world have made me confront the uncertainty of this thing called life. We are here to get through this thing called life. Isn't that what Prince says in the beginning of uh, one of his songs? Anyway. At first, I honestly was panicking at the fact that one day I would cease to exist. For about two weeks, this potent reminder of my mortality haunted my mind, with constant thoughts of impending doom. In response to this, I began to earnestly practice daily zazen. Since 2018, I had pretty steady practice, but it has sort of fallen off in the last few months as my life has become a bit more frantic. I feel ashamed in a way because I thought that by now I'd have a better handle on these sorts of existential crises, but alas, I have not yet found the stoic calmness of a monk. Uh, now I'm weak into consistent daily practice and have begun to feel better. The fear, however, still lurks in the back of my mind, a bit dulled now, but still there. Given your experience with impending doom around Huntington's disease, I'm curious if you have any advice or can point to some Zen texts that may offer a perspective on uncertainty. Perhaps even do a video on uncertainty. Okay, let's try. Let's see what we can do. There is no try, only do. That's what Yoda didn't say. So the reason I said that Frankenstein uh, was related to this, the song Frankenstein, was because uh, there's a famous line in, in the movie, the first movie, Frankenstein, with uh, Bela Lugosi, not Bela Lugosi, he was almost in it, there's a whole story around that, but anyway, it was Boris Karloff, but uh, it, uh, it, the line goes, we belong dead. I think maybe that's in Bride of Frankenstein, some Frankenstein nerd should tell me. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, and then Frankenstein like blows up the castle, I think it is in, in uh, bride of Frankenstein. And this seems to be about death and the fear of death. I think one of the things about the fear of death is that as a living organism there is no way to completely transcend the fear of death. I don't, I, I think it's sort of built into the, the sort of creature that we are. So I, I think the, the fact that, that you have a fear of death is, is just natural, it's just going to happen. I, I don't think anybody gets over it. I get the impression from reading, for example, uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj, that he sounds like one of the few people who got about as close as you can get to transcending the fear of death. There are some recorded talks by him when he knew he was dying. He, he had cancer and he kept on giving talks right until, I don't know, a couple of days before he died. Uh, shorter and shorter talks, of course, because he was having uh, problems doing it, but he talks about the fear of death and he talks about how it um, it gets mitigated and it's almost gone but it's still got a little bit it's still hanging on there uh, to a little bit of a thread so you're never going to completely transcend it but I've found that Zazen practice has helped me get over what this uh, questioner uh, describes as this kind of constant fear of death what does he say uh, 
yeah, constant thoughts of impending doom and the fear of ceasing to exist. And he mentions what I've written about uh, Huntington's disease. And in case any of you haven't read my books, uh, my mother died from Huntington's disease. Go look it up if you want to know what it is. It is often described as like a combination of Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, a third one. I, oh, oh, uh, ALS, the um, Lou Gehrig's disease, because everything just goes wrong in your body and then you die. And my mother died from that. And because my mother died from it, I have a 50% chance of dying from it myself. And now I'm in my officially now late 50s, uh, and normally one starts to uh, experience symptoms in their 30s. So the chances are I just was uh, I just got lucky and was born without the gene that my mom had. But um, it still it still could be there according to, to science but uh, but un unlikely if you've passed through your 30s and 40s without showing any symptoms but this the reason I bring it up is because this really uh, propelled my uh, search for meaning and of life the universe and everything because I learned about this condition in my family in my teens and then I was like, oh my god, I might only have 10 more years uh, to live, and, and I'm, you know, 17 years old, you know, 10 more years of, of decent life uh, before everything starts to go awful. Uh, and that, uh, that put a, that lit a fire under my ass, as we say in America, to try to find meaning of life. And doing Zazen practice was really useful for that because th there is a there is a saying uh, Shunyu Suzuki said this a lot a lot of people have said this that life and death are happening very quickly that that each moment you die to the moment before so there the idea of continuity from one moment to the next is an illusion Nishijima Roshi used to describe it as saying that moments of life were like frames in a film so that each one is separate from another and that's part of a Buddhist theory now just hearing that as a theoretical construct is probably not enough to get somebody over the, the feeling of impending doom or the feeling of the fear of, of ceasing to exist. Uh, but a steady long-term practice has been a way, for me at least, to confront that moment by moment by moment, just to watch it happen. Because when you're sitting there quietly. I mean, at first when you're starting to do zazen, there's all sorts of uh, thoughts and recollections and all sorts of other distractions that go on. But as you kind of penetrate into that, all those distractions become what my, my, my friend Greg Fain described as being like a piece of gum that's in your mouth that you're chewing on that has lost all its flavor, but for <laughs> some unknown reason you're still chewing on it if you ever had that experience that that is I think a, a good description and that's when you start to watch life and death just happening moment by moment uh, the feeling of, of a fear of non-existence is an interesting one that I've been thinking about a lot because I'm looking at the way different traditions describe nothingness and emptiness and one of the ways that I always settled on to describe emptiness is to say it, it, emptiness doesn't mean nihilistic black void it means more experiencing things exactly as they are without any sort of barrier between you and the thing you're experiencing the kind of complete openness but I've also begun to think that maybe nothing is everything uh, which is I don't know. I've never read Meher Baba, but it in uh, but I'm a big fan of the Who, and Pete Townsend was really into Meher Baba, and he used that quote, "Nothing is everything," which he attributed to Meher Baba. And I was looking it up on the internet, and I found that it's slightly wrong. That isn't exactly what Meher Baba said, but it was pretty close. He was like saying the nothing and the everything, or something like that. But it was close enough, so Pete Townsend wasn't wrong. Anyway, nothing is everything. So, one of the ways to look at it is that complete oblivion is on the one hand impossible uh, that's that's 
what everybody says. <laughs> you know, it's what I say, and it's what Nisargadatta Maharaj says, and people in the Advaita tradition, and people in the Buddhist tradition also, and people in the Christian mystical tradition, all the people who've done the sort of meditation work uh, come along, and come out of it, and say that death, death as we imagine it, usually is a kind of illusion. It, it's a kind of a, a, an, an imagination of death. But we all tend to imagine nothingness or death as I look at death as an object. So it, it's sort of a, a sense of I'm still here confronting this object and the object is nothing. So that's kind of a frightening prospect that I'm going to be sitting here, uh, you know, in the way that I'm experiencing this computer screen in front of me and the dog and the bass behind me and all these things, you know, but instead of those things, I'm going to be experiencing nothing, you know, and, and, and it's going to be forever. <laughs> That's going to be bad. But what they're talking about, what all these mystical traditions is talking about is emerging in where you and nothing merge completely. And in that sense, nothing is everything. So everything comes from nothing. So wh what we are experiencing right now is nothingness, is the void, is the absence of anything. So there's not some future time in which we'll experience the absence of everything and we're not experiencing that now, that everything's hunky-dory now and everything's great, but there's a future in which nothing is is what we're experiencing that's that's not the case there's just there's just nothing and that nothing is the source of everything so merging into the source of everything is also merging into nothingness there's also something that Dogen says and I wish uh, for the sake of this correspondent I could tell you chapter and verse but he he talks about you shouldn't love life and fear death it might be in Life and Death, which is a chapter, the, one of the final chapters of Shobo Genzo, but I won't swear to it. I'm not sure if that's where it is, but it's somewhere in Dogen's writings that he talks about that. And there is that sense of life good, death bad, but that's not always the case. You know, just bringing things back to my mother, there was a certain point where it was clear that that death was a better state than life. And for a lot of people, um, that is the case. I think for all of us, in, in at some point, that becomes the case where death is, is the better state, and that and then we just merge into death because that's the best, the best state. But I don't think it's so terrifying because it's not, it's not nothing. It's it's the source of everything. Again, I will say what I said at the beginning of this video, that the fear of death or the fear of pain and the, the fear of disease and the fear of whatever, you know, you might, might cause your death, and it doesn't go away as long as you're a living organism because you, that's built in. That's how the organism remains alive is by having a certain amount of fear of death. But that crushing anxiety about death as being this inevitable, you know, the present everybody gets but nobody wants, I don't know who said that, but that's some, some, someone I heard said that, uh, is, is unnecessary because, because you're always confronting death. It's always death. <laughs> this is death right now. You watching this video is death. You're watching minute, um, I guess, maybe 14 or so of this video. Well, minute 13 of this video and 12 and 11 and 10 they're already dead they're already gone they've gone away what happened you know wh what happened you you think you're gonna you're gonna see the rest of this video but you're not because th what you are is this momentary existence and what sees the end of this video where I ask for donations is something else something that that is created in the future out of the nothingness that is now Anyway, <laughs> if you'd like to uh, contribute to me so that I have something in my bank account rather than nothing, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below. See, I think I'm pretty clever for coming up with that one. It is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. Note that I'm not seeing those words as I do these videos. I, I put those on later, so I don't know if I'm going to be pointing exactly right. Anyway. Uh, but as always, you don't have to donate if you don't want to, because this is offered for free. But 
Um, I do appreciate your donations. Anyway, we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time, even when you die. Bye. Hey Ziggy, how you doing? You don't have an Im a fear of impending doom, do you? No, most of the time. Only when you see trucks. When he sees trucks, he gets really scared. Ziggy, say hi to the folks. All right. Talk to you later, Ziggy. Bye.